first. So briefly, uh, so Jin Eng is originally from Penang. So he started uh, studying E in UCSI KL. And after working with a Japanese MNC for three years, so he was headhunted and relocated to JB and then joined a US company based in Singapore. So interestingly, it was during his time uh, there, he got to travel around the world to perform on-site installation and training for clients that he gained valuable experience in customer relation and technology in vision imaging inspection. And in 2008, after conducting numerous robotics arm um, uh, project installation, a spin -off, he spin off a startup company to focus on affordable robotics catering to the high mix, low volume sector. So this is where I think he successfully got funded from MTDC and produced a robotics arm. And I think uh, he, this is where he, he created uh, Giganos Autonomous. So I hand over the floor to you, Jin Eng, so that you can share about your products and solution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Farhan, for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon to all our guests. And then uh, thanks so much for, from the, for the RZ for inviting us uh, to give a sharing on what we are doing. So I'll do the sharing now. Let me share the screen now. Are you able to see the screen? Uh, not yet. How about now? Uh, not yet. Okay, can not you try yet. again? Yeah, try again. How about now? All right. All right. It's coming up. All right. All right. You can put it on. All right. Great. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you a brief walkthrough on uh, what uh, our industry are having now. So that uh, you understand more on what you are at, uh, what you are currently at. So a brief walkthrough. So industry uh, currently we are at the juncture of a uh, 3.0 and 4.0. So a brief walkthrough is 1.0 industry uh, revolution 1.0. So practically all machines and devices are running on water and steam. So it evolves to 2.0, which machine from water and steam actually uh, uses uh, electricity. And then from there onwards during the 19 uh, I think 60s, if I'm not wrong. Uh, introduction of electronics and computer were introduced in factories. This whereby that uh, the revolution started the boom of the uh, industrial sector. So currently in Malaysia, most of our uh, SMEs, our MPCs are at 3.0, whether it's in the beginning, at the middle, or at the end. So this is a very integral part in the way that uh, in order to move forward to 4.0, new technology needs to be introduced into the production and the manufacturing sector. So in order to be 4.0, we are talking about IoT. We are talking about uh, robotics, in the smart robotics, so that uh, real-time data can be accumulated, can be collected, and then after that, a smart decision can be made. So we always ask our customer, this is sharing, uh, we always ask our customer, which is uh, what are the key metrics of adoption? So we always tell them that whether it's an investment or cost, because this is very important. If let's say they look at as cost, then uh, normally the adoption will not go that far. But if, let's say they view this as an investment, then this is a different story. And then they also need to be committed in a way from top to bottom. If let's say because uh, the synchronization, uh, synchronization and synergy is very important. And also we always make our customer to understand that uh, adopting new technology is not by eliminating jobs. In fact, they are actually creating more jobs and also they must be willing to upskill the existing workforce. So we also let our customer know in a way that no machines or robots or technology are able to replace human dexterity and also critical thinking and multitasking because human being is an organic AI. It's the most uh, advanced AI that we have in the market. And also, of course, in order to have adoption, we also need to have a basic infrastructure in place, such as our connectivity our connectivity such as 4G and 5G in the future. So we always tell our customer that technology adoption is, the, is a journey. It's not something that you buy, you taste, and then after that you will see the result on the spot. So for our definition of automation in Gano, we actually uh, branch it out into two sections. We call it front-end automation and the back-end automation. So what are front-end automation? So front-end automation is basically things that you can see. Material handling system from the conveyors to your robotics 
and uh, such as the process control machinery, such as uh, your filling machines, your weighing machines, uh, in order your order or mixing machines are all process control machinery. And of course, sensors and instruments, robots and autonomous vehicle, such as uh, AGVs and AMR. As for back-end automation, so uh, basically it's the machinery that works behind the scene. So there are MES, full-fledged ERP, and of course, IoT cloud services, and then uh, your warehouse management services, and also third-party integration to your e-commerce platform. So you actually link your inventory to e-commerce platform so that uh, for those who are in the M to C industry, meaning that uh, manufacturer to consumer market, this is a, a very important system that they, they are uh, needing now. So as for robotics today, uh, practically it has evolved over, from year to year. Last time robotics uh, is very simple. They do uh, repetitive tasks and tedious tasks, but now robots are actually enabled with IoT technology and IoT features so that they can collect data which are relevant to the end user's requirements. So a brief walkthrough what are uh, instruments and sensors. So instruments are sensors are actually uh, devices that measure, devices that actually collect data so that the back-end automation will be able to actually do some uh, uh, analyzation and also some forecasting. So, so instruments and sensors are quite important in the way that they are the main parser, they are the frontliners of the data. As for uh, IoT, this is a general idea. So IoT can practically be uh, deployed anywhere. We are not talking only on manufacturing. We can, we can talk about logistics, we can talk about retails, we can even talk about household. So all these uh, deployment like sensors, instruments, and data uh, can be actually deployed. And then after that, uh, we uh, actually integrate with uh, IoT device or IoT modules of gateways, which sends data to the cloud server so that uh, end users or users itself are able to access this uh, information or these parameters within their fingertips, either through mobile application or through dashboard system. So this is all back-end services, back-end automation. As for ERP, full-fledged ERP actually can be actually branched out into multiple sections. I will not go into the specifics. So for back-end automation, practically we have a barcoding systems, a full-fledged ERP, whole system, which is the point of sales. And of course, a accounting system, most of the businesses will have it. And we are talking about e-commerce, the booming industry. So how do you link all this? So these are all back-end automation. So these are some of our uh, products and services uh, made available in the market. So we are into robotics. We're into ERP, uh, we call it enterprise uh, resource uh, system. And also we are into agriculture and uh, poultry system. So as we talk about uh, automation, such as conveyors, all these things are the, uh, I would say the fundamentals of automation. We do provide all these services. So we come to this, this is the most important part that I would like to share with you all, which is uh, how do we apply all this uh, technology, which I mentioned previously, how do we deploy it into the production facility or your uh, retail or your warehousing? So I'm going to share this video with you all. This, uh, this is a robot palletizing system. So practically, these robots are doing a simple palletizing, which has been done by human beings, but they replace it in a way that we want the throughput to increase higher. But you can see from this video that the footprint is not that much. It's just a very small footprint. It's not uh, been uh, the misconception by consumer that robot, you need a very huge space to deploy them. But for the current time, for the current technology we have in the market, you don't need that anymore. As for IoT application, so it practically can apply IoT anywhere. So from the first uh, picture that you can see here, an IoT into a solar system. So to actually get the efficiency reading of the conversion rate from PV panels to electricity. And on the right hand side, you can see that there's a normal refrigerator that you can see in cafes or coffee camps. So, but this uh, refrigerator itself is quite unique in a way that it is used to stop uh, vaccine. So in a way that the end user, they, will, they require temperature reading from time to time. But the time to time means that they want this to be in real time manner so that if anything goes wrong, let's say that the uh, become kaput faulty. At least they will get the alert 
first time so that they can actually save all the vaccine and by doing that, they can actually do some preventive maintenance also. As for this uh, video that I'm going to share with you is particularly an uh, implementation of IoT for back-end automation for wastewater treatment discharge. So practically, if let's say you are from the manufacturing sector dealing with a DOE, so, so you will understand that in from time to time, DOE will request data information, how much water, how much the wastewater has been discharged into the drainage system. So this is whereby that we deploy our system into this uh, existing uh, machinery or existing site so that uh, they are able to track all this within the fingertips by going through the mobile application. This is another project has been done, uh, I think last year, if I'm not wrong. So it's an automation system, which is uh, to do with simple material handling system. Practically, you can see conveyors there to get the throughput, to do the counting on production output. And also, you can see at the center bottom part of the slide, which you can see uh, temperature has been, the temperature reading has been taken account into. And also, the mixing speed of the auger. I'm not sure whether you can see clearly the auger is spinning. So these are all important parameters for production, which is uh, all these readings and all these parameters are the benchmark and the threshold for the quality, uh, quality of the product. So whatever changes in temperature or the RPM is what I've shown you here will dictate the quality of the end, unit, end product itself. So a, back, a brief background of what we do here is most of our technology is uh, made in Malaysia. We are the IP holder. So in a way that we are able to do customization, we are more flexible in a way. And then also our philosophy is we are more to retrofitting because we understand that whether it is from the manufacturer sector or from the retail sector, everyone is uh, trying to save cost. So what we do is we enhance your existing uh, machinery or your existing devices so they actually can make it more practical and save much cost on, uh, on the upfront investment. So a little bit of sharing, this is some of our least customers for robotic output, IoT and automation. So whether it's a local MNC, a local company or an MNC, we are also working with some uh, government agencies. And as for our backend automation ERP system, these are the list of our clients we have in the market. So it can be from OEM sector, from FMB, even from uh, for semicon industry. With this, I would like to end my sharing. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the time. I'll pass the floor back to you, Fahan. All right. Thank you so much, Jing Eng from Jigano. So if you would like to get in touch, or if you have any questions for Jing Eng, you can uh, scan the QR code to get in touch touch directly with him, or if you have any questions, you can uh, put them in the chat box and then we'll try to get the questions answered at the end of the session. So again, a uh, reminder, so if you would like to get in touch with Jin Eng, you can scan the QR code or click the link that my team will share in the chat box as well, so that you would be able to get in touch with Jin Eng uh, to further discuss how Jin Eng and Jigano team would be able to help you automate and you know uh, engage you to help you optimize your production your production line and your facilities all right thank you so much jinang <laughs>